The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. Our second presenter of the day is, is Medhat Shahada. He's a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Ryerson University in Toronto with 25 years of industrial and academic experience pertaining to construction materials. He's a member of international technical committees including CSA Committee A23-1 and 2 and ASTM Committee C9, Concrete and Aggregate, and related technical subcommittees. His areas of expertise include deterioration mechanisms of concrete, construction sustainability, and recycling of construction and industrial waste. And today he's going to talk about alkali reactivity of reclaimed concrete aggregate. Matthew. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today to talk about uh, five years of research into the area of reactivity of reclaimed concrete aggregate. I would like to acknowledge uh, three graduate students who work in this area, Chris, Waneed, and uh, Rob. The three of them graduated a few years ago, and they are working in, in the industry. So basically, as I said, it's the uh, research offer efforts of five years. I'll try to cover as much as I can uh, in 15 minutes. So what is reclaimed or recycled concrete aggregate? It's basically the the concrete or aggregate that's recycled from either demolished concrete or returned to plant concrete. The difference between them is the demolished concrete is a structure that is that has demolished. It, it reached the end of the service life. At the end of the service life, the structure is demolished. The old concrete could be recycled and used as aggregate in new concrete. The return to plant, on the other hand, it's the rejected concrete. So the service life of the concrete is perhaps less than one day. It's returned to plant because it's rejected. It's dumped on the backyard of the batch plant. Then it could be processed and used as recycled concrete aggregate. Both of them comes with a challenge. Of course, the challenge with the structures is you are inherit. You're taking the old problem with you. So if it's contaminated with sulfate or chloride, you have to watch out for that. If it's coming from structure that's affected by alkali silica reaction, you also have to uh, to do your homework. And that's the topic of today's presentation. So. Let's uh, have a look at it. That's the recycled concrete. So any recycled concrete aggregate would look like this. The good thing about this particular one is the quartz aggregate is dark in color, so you can actually see the original stone and the residual mortar around it. So this, this is very important for recycled concrete aggregate. This affects not only alkali silica reactivity, but shrinkage, workability, workability, retention, and so on. So if we go inside the particle, that's what you will see. But in this case, that's an affected uh, aggregate. So this particular aggregate comes from a test block, 13 year old. The test block was built as an experiment, and it has reactive aggregate. So the original aggregate was reactive. After 13 years, the expansion was, uh, I don't remember the number, but it exceeded the limit. And of course, with observed or uh, with noticeable cracking. So the RCA particle will have these components. It will have the stone, that's the original stone, and this is the mortar, and also you, you can see here a crack that's formed due to alkali silic reaction. So basically, if you're not familiar with alkali silic reaction, the mechanism as follows. The alkalis and the source of alkalis is cement. The alkalis from cement attack a, sort, um, a type of silica in the aggregate called reactive silica. They form a gel. The gel has high affinity to water. The gel absorbs water, expands. When the gel expands, it puts a pressure on the stone and the concrete, 
and you end up with cracking. Another uh, scanning electro image picture showing the same thing. So that's again the original stone with silica gel and you see the deterioration. So what is the issue? Well, the RCA, so of course the first thing is if you are having an issue with, with RCA, if it is coming from alkali silica reactive structure, don't use it on concrete. Well, we thought of that and there are work going in using the RCA in other applications. We have another research to use it in control low strength material, a structure, an application that perhaps doesn't have high requirements in terms of strength and durability. Or let me say, does not have the same level of requirement as a structural concrete. You could also use it as granular base under asphalt or uh, sometimes concrete if it's not contaminated with sulfate. So there are applications that are out there that involve RCA without going into the trouble of alkali silica reaction or sulfate. However, in some situations, the lack of availability of natural aggregate could push to the use of RCA and the RCA, the, the only source of RCA that's available in this location could be affected by, by ASR. So of course what we're doing is we are trying to be ready. If this is the case, can we deal with it? Can we live with it? And this is the, uh, the research. So basically, if the RCA is coming from the RCA, from alkali silica reactive uh, affected concrete, so concrete affected by ASR, what's going to happen? Will the new concrete suffer deterioration? Of course the answer could be yes, could be no. It could be yes because it's a reactive aggregate. You put a new concrete, you have new source of alkalis, you get reaction. But the other part or the other side could say, well, that structure has been in service for 20 years, 15 years. There is a likelihood that the reactive silica in the concrete, in the old concrete, is already consumed. So the reactive silica has already reacted. Even the gel, it could have been oxidized or carbonated. You take it, you put it in the new concrete, you may not get anything. So we need to find out if we take this concrete or if we take this aggregate and put in new concrete, are we going to get expansion or not? So that's something we need to find out. And if it is expensive, are there preventive measures? And these preventive measures, are they practical? Are they um, uh, practical in terms of the level? Let's say, for example, supplementary cementing material, if you use it as preventive measure. If you have 15% silica fume, 15% metacarolin, if that supplementary stop the reaction, it's good, but it's not practical for workability and for other concrete properties. So it comes with its own uh, negatives. So we want to make sure that we have a mitigation, we have preventive measure that's, that's practical and does not have negative effect on the concrete, on the other properties of the concrete. The other thing is, is there a way to safely use RCA even if part of it is affected by ASR? And that's a very good question. When you collect RCA, you collect it from different locations. So there is a very good chance you'll have a big stockpile. Some part of this stockpile could, could come from a structure that's affected by ASR. So if you take this RCA with some of it affected by ASR, is this going to cause you an issue? That's also another thing that we're looking at. And then the last but not the least, how do you test it? Are there accelerated methods to test it? So all these were covered in uh, three or actually three projects over the last five years. So basically what we did, we did a comparison between the RCA that I just spoke about. It's coming from uh, a test block, contained an aggregate called SPRAT. It's from Ottawa, Ontario. And we also have SPRAT. So we are comparing the expansion and the performance of concrete with SPRAT virgin aggregate and recycled aggregate containing SPRAT. We use different types of, uh, of cement, different supplementary cementing materials, and we try different methodologies. I'm going to talk about the concrete resin test, accelerated motor bar test, and some work on scanning electron microscopy. Just to give you an idea about the test, the common test for ASR, there are other tests, but these are the ones that are used in, 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 in this study. The concrete prism is a concrete mix, so it's basically coarse aggregate, fine aggregate cements, very close to what you use in an actual structure. Um, and you take the concrete prism, you soak it, you don't, sorry, you expose it to high humidity, and you test it, so the acceleration in the test is just the temperature, 38 degrees Celsius, you push the alkali a little bit. So, but it's very close to what you have in your actual structure. On the other side, we have the accelerated mortar bar. You get results here in a year if it's aggregate, in two years if it's preventive measure. Accelerated mortar bar, 
the good thing about it, you get results in 14 weeks, 14 days, two weeks, 14 days, but we accelerate the reaction by very high temperature, 80 Celsius, and external source of alkalis. And you have to crush the aggregate. If you're testing reactivity, of course, aggregate, you have to crush it to a sand site. And in between, we have what is known as the concrete microbar. It's not an ASTM or Canadian standard. It's being used in Europe, and it's kind of in between. It's not a mortar. It's not a concrete. It's actually paste, cementing material and water, and stone. So it has its own characteristic. Of course, the advantage of the concrete microbar is you don't have to crush the stone. Sometimes when you crush the stone, you lose the reactive, the reactive constituents. If your aggregate is alkali carbonate reactive aggregate, if you crush it to sand size, you don't get the reaction, you don't see it. So there is a big merit or a good advantage of using the concrete microbar. One of them is uh, you don't crush the coarse aggregate to sand size fraction. But it also comes with, with sub-negative. <coughs> we can talk about them later. So these are the differences between the concrete resin the accelerated mortar bar and the concrete micro bar. I will remind you with them when we deal with the, through the presentation. So basically, that's all the results that I'm going to present now using the concrete prism. Concrete red prism is the most reliable lab test method. Of course, the most reliable method is an actual structure, service, a structure that has been in service for 20 years. If the structure doesn't show signs of deterioration, it means the aggregate is good. After that, the large blocks that you can put inside, but you get result maybe in 10, 15 years. We're talking, if we're talking about lab, the most reliable one is the concrete prism. So I'm going to run through some of the results. Basically, the curve you see here is the expansion after two years, and we are getting the same expansion in the RCA as the virgin aggregate, the same level of disruption and expansion. Not only that. So I'm going to explain the reason. When you try to use uh, low alkali cement, low alkali cement could work with the virgin aggregate. But with the recycled aggregate, low alkali cement does not work. The curve here shows the expansion versus sodium oxide equivalent of Portland cement. So basically, this curve rep represents the natural stone. If your alkali level in cement is 0.7% sodium oxide equivalent, you're, you're likely to stop the expansion. 0.55 percent with the RCA did not work. Of course, the reason for this is, if you remember the picture I, I showed you, which is the RCA particle, it has stone and residual mortar. The residual mortar still have alkalis in it that it's contributed to the post motion. So basically here, this is 0.55 from the fresh or the new cement, but you still have alkalis coming from the stone itself, from the RCA itself. Right? The second reason, of course, is when you crush the RCA, you're likely to create micro crack in the original stone. Those micro cracks will create another path for the alkalis where alkalis can go inside the aggregate and perhaps react with some silica that did not react during the service life of the structure. So these are the reasons. Looking at this curve, you would expect that the preventive measures that work for the virgin aggregate would not work for the reactor. The reason is the way supplementary cementing, cementing material work is by binding alkalis. It's a storage for the alkalis. So if you have more alkalis in the system, you need more storage, right? So you are likely to need more levels of supplementary cementing materials. And that's indeed what we have found. So basically, that's the replacement level of different type of supplementary. This is the expansion. The dotted line represents the virgin aggregate. The solid line represents the RCA. So the levels that stop the expansion for the virgin aggregate does not do much with the RCA. So a new challenge is now to let's stop the reaction. So we have to find supplementary cementing material to, to stop the reaction. But remember, we're talking about 100% reclaimed RCA. So if you're making the whole coarse aggregate is made of RCA, you need higher level of supplementary cementing material. So to make the long story short, we try different materials. And ternary blends of 5% silica fume and type F or TI or fly ash of less lower than 20% calcium oxide would work at a, at a percentage of 25 or 30 to be on the safe side. It's still a workable mix. 5% silica fume is not that high to make it very sticky. 30% fly ash or 25% fly ash it is still something doable, something that you can do in concrete. Again, the same, the same uh, presentation and you or the same results. 5 to 25 were actually for both calcium uh, fly ash, what we used to call F, which is less than 
or should I SCI, which is less than 20, between 12 and 20. So in summary, anything below 20 calcium oxide equivalent, of course, with alkalis within 2%, is likely to stop the reaction. So now we found a mitigation, even if you use 100% RCO. So this is another uh, presentation of the preventive measure. We tried lithium. The lithium, of course, they reduce the expansion a lot. This is zero lithium. But, OK, so we now found, found a practical, or we found how to stop the reaction. Let, let me jump to something else. What about blending the RCA with natural reactive aggregates, with natural non-reactive aggregates? So let's say that instead of using 100% RCA, what about taking 70% RCA blended with natural non-reactive aggregates? We have tried this approach, and we found that you can actually stop the reaction with the same level of supplementary that you are using with natural stone. So basically, just using 70% instead of 100%, you are able to stop you are able to stop the expansion with the same level that you would have used if you have a natural reactive aggregate. So how about accelerated method? The accelerated mortar bar test has to be modified. There were, there were some modifications that we had to do, but mainly in terms of the absorption. The RCA has an absorption that could go up to 7 or 8 percent, so we have to compensate for the absorption before doing the mix. So what we have done here is we have shown the relation between the two-year expansion and the 14-day expansion. And you can see that these samples are the ones that fail both accelerated motor bar and the concrete prism. Those ones are the samples that pass both of them. We didn't have anything here. This is the dangerous zone where you have a, fa a passing result in the, concrete, in, the uh, in the motor bar and failing result in two years. Basically, it's, you're telling the end user that the material is passing, but when you put in another structure at long, after a long time, it will start to get expansion. So this gives promising results in terms of the accelerated mortar bar. The next step was actually we have to specify how you test it. The, the, the main point here is when you crush it and process the material, you still you need to have both of them. So this is the, sand, the size that you use in the mortar bar. You need to have the stone and the mortar bar, both of them. And of course, this has to be very well emphasized before running the test. Uh, we went to interlab study for the accelerated mortar bar. The results were very encouraging. The within test variation between four labs were very similar to natural stone. Um, and then the next step was to go to another test, which is the concrete micro bar. The advantage of the concrete micro bar, as I said, is that you don't have to crush the stone to a certain size. There is advantage for alkali carbonate reactive material. There is also an advantage for sandstone material. We did some preliminary results, and we found that it does work if you use an expansion limit of 1.1% after 28 days, you are likely to find the expansion. You are likely to evaluate the expansion. If the material is expansive, you will be able to see it. So we took it to another step, and we did some expansion tests on different sources, and we found the same result, which showed that this test could be a promising tool in the future. It's still a short term. You, it minimized the crushing, and perhaps it will give you more uh, reliable results. So I will jump the conclusion because I think I'm out of time, and I'll uh, I'm be more than happy to answer any question you have. Thank you very much. Thank you.